3.8 model. And I recently installed a turbo on it. And I also I'm going to convert it to E85. So I added additional gauges to it that were all matching since these two gauges left with the turbos installed, the torque and then the fuel efficiency gauge meant nothing at all after the turbo. I also have some other gauges over here, but this particular video, I wanted to focus on these gauges that I watched multiple videos before I installed them and none of the videos addressed one really important aspect and then one minor aspect. The really important aspect is when you change this gauge out, you need to add your own sensor that comes with the gauge, otherwise it's not accurate. So it's an aftermarket sensor. And the sensor is smaller than the actual stock sensor, which is good because then you can just get an adapter, which I'll show you in a minute. But after you install that, then the ECU no longer has the original sensor if you put it in the place of the stock sensor. And so then your check engine light comes on. So that's a problem. So now I had to go back and reinstall the original gauges. So I had to put the original gauges back in and tuck them back inside. <clears throat> that's why they're all down here. So that's the original gauge cluster, which you need to keep in order for your check engine light not to come on and for the purposes of also being helpful the green wires your power and I had some of these wires already labeled for a radio install that I had not used so that's why I chose these particular colors just because they were already labeled so the green wire that's originally on this little connector that's your constant 12 volt and then your pink wire that's your headlight wire so that they dim and then the yellow wire that's actually your accessory wire and again I use these colors just because they were already labeled so it would remind me later so that's your accessory wire so when you turn on your key and then when you <clears throat> go to install this sensor Trying to get the camera down in there. So this is the sensor. All the way in the back of the motor. And you kind of see there's a coupler. Let me try to get it better. There it is. So there's the sensor right there. And then you can see that's the actual uh, part that goes into it that purple part right there that little purple clip that was the original one and so I had to go get another sensor because I, I got rid of it because I didn't think I was going to need it anymore but then I have the new sensor in there in the motor but I have to plug the other one in with the gauges and that was the only way I'm going to get the check engine light to go off they told me so I'm going to try it and I'll let you know how it works okay so I have both sensors installed and wired in, it's just the a stock one is just sitting next to the other one, but it seems to be sufficient and giving some sort of readings to the ECU. And now when I have the car on, check engine light is no longer there. And when I did first install it, the check engine light was still there. So I actually took it down to AutoZone and had them run the diagnostic and it came back oil temperature sensor high. So that's when it was previously unplugged. After I plugged it in, they erased the codes and now everything works and I have no check engine light on. So problem solved. Gotta keep your old gauges if you're gonna upgrade your new ones. Another tip if you're going to be installing any sort of aftermarket sensors is when you take out the, heart, the, the cluster itself, you kind of get these uh, little clips that don't quite fit very well together and they're hard to adjust so that they look good and from the front. And then as soon as you hit a bump or you have some vibration, then they come loose in the back. So I would say do yourself a favor and definitely add thread lock to these 
nuts on the back here. So I just used the little blue thread block and that seemed to work much better from the first two or three times that I had to adjust these.